book of Job, Job has 42 chapters. In the first two chapters, it says, Job was a perfect man who feared God and hated evil. Kids, great advice. Fear God, hate evil. Life is real simple that way. Job had seven sons and three daughters, and he had thousands of sheep and camels and oxen and asses. The guy was rich. And one day the messenger came. This bro, Job probably written after the flood because before the flood, they lived to be 900. Job probably was written in this time when they still lived to be 400. I mean, his 10 kids were growing out of the house, all died, and he lived long enough to know his great, great, great grandkids from the second batch of 10 kids. You've got to be living a long time to accomplish that, okay? So the messenger came to Job and said, Job, I got some bad news. The oxen and asses were stolen and your servants got killed. And by the way, the fire came down and burned up all the sheep and the camels got stolen. And Job, all 10 of your kids died. Job's having a bad day. <laughs> and he said, The Lord gave, the Lord hath taken away. Blessed be the name of the Lord. And then Satan gave him boils from the top of his head to the bottom of his feet. Now, a boil is like the world's worst zit. How many have ever had a boil before? You know what I'm talking about. Can you imagine being completely covered with boils? And then his wife turned against him. You know, a man can handle just about any tragedy, but that's the toughest one right there. I'll tell you what, you pastors and guys that get to preach here, let me give you a verse that you almost never hear preached on. I've only heard it once in my life, 36 years as a Christian. Ephesians chapter 5 talks about, you know, husbands love your wives and wives submit yourselves to your husbands. But look at this carefully. And the wife see that she, that see that she reverence her husband. Reverence. Treat him like a god. Offer him burnt sacrifices three times a day, okay? <laughs> Breakfast, noon. <laughs> and the God, Job said, you talk like one of the foolish women. Can't we receive good at the hand of God and not evil? And then Job's four friends came to visit him. One of those guys was the shortest man mentioned in the Bible, Bildad the Shuhite. That's pretty short, okay? But these four guys came and they talked to Job for 35 chapters. Most of their discussion was typical worldly wisdom. Oh, Job, whoever perished being innocent, you must ascend. Now, folks, listen. If something bad happens to somebody, you don't know why it happened. Pray for them, love them, encourage them, and shut up. Okay? Don't go to the hospital when they get their gallstones out and say, Brother, these aren't gallstones. These are tithes and offerings. God's getting them out of you one way or another. <laughs> don't do that, okay? Let God take care of it. Well, Job is sitting there in the ashes next to the graves of his ten kids, scraping the pus out of the boils. He's miserable. He's uncomfortable. He's broke. His wife's mad at him. And he says, Lord, what are you doing? <laughs> I wish you'd answer me. Hey, you don't have to live on this planet very long before you're going to be asking that question. Why did you do this to me? Maybe some of you have already been there. We had an interesting year last year. We've been there a couple times, okay, in the last 12 months. Lord, what are you doing? Job didn't know about Romans 8, 28, but we know. All things work together for good to them that love God, to them that are the called according to his purpose. Now, he didn't say everything that happens is good. He said it'll work together for good. I'll show you. Has anybody here ever been hungry? You ever been hungry before? Suppose you come to my house, you say, hey, Brother Hovind, I'm hungry. I'll say, come on in, man, have a seat. I'm going to give you a cup of flour. <laughs> that don't sound too good. How about a spoonful of salt? Now, that'll taste good. And, and a spoonful of baking soda? Boy, that'll wake you up in the morning. Swallow that. Probably getting kind of dry by now, so let's pour down half a cup of Crisco and chase it down with a cup of buttermilk. He's saying, man, that would be horrible. I got a better idea. Let's mix them all together and make biscuits. Did you know the individual ingredients for biscuits taste lousy? But they work together for biscuits, don't they? And God promised everything will work together for good if you love him. All you got to do in this life is keep your heart right with God. That will be tough to do. Because the heart is deceitful above all things and desperately wicked. But Job is sitting there scraping the pus out of the boils, wondering, why did this happen to me? And the Lord answered Job out of a whirlwind. You know, if a tornado starts talking to me, I'm going to pay attention. 
And the Lord said, Who is this that darkeneth counsel by words without knowledge? Job, your four friends did not know what they were talking about. And you've got to be real careful getting a Bible doctrine from the book of Job. Jehovah's Witnesses do this all the time. See, it says right here in the Bible, the dead don't know anything. Yeah, and who's talking in that chapter? It's one of Job's friends. And God said, at the end, they're stupid, okay? And you believe what they believe, so what, what's that mean about you? Hmm, yeah, okay. <laughs> God said, gird up now thy loins like a man, for I will demand of thee and answer thou me. Where wast thou when I laid the foundations of the earth? I read that 35 years ago as a brand new Christian, and I thought, what kind of question is that? God says, Job, where were you when I built the earth? How many of you were here when God built the earth? Was anybody here when God built the earth? Come on, you got some old timers out there. Brother Pennington, you're not old enough. Okay, good. Now, kids, this, this is going to be complicated, kids, so listen. Since you were not here when God built the earth, that means that God is older than you are. How many can figure this out? Okay. Did it ever occur to you that God is also stronger than you are? Did it ever occur to you that God is smarter than you are? Did it ever occur to you that God is richer than you are? You say, Brother Hovind, everybody's richer than I are. <laughs> well, God sure is. Try this one. I've said this one a thousand times and I've never understood it once. But I like saying it. And I really think about it till my brain hurts. Did it ever occur to you that nothing ever occurred to God? Things occur to me all the time. I say, wow, I never thought of that before. Did you know that never happens to God? He's already thought of everything. He's also thought of everything that you've ever thought about. He understands the imaginations of the thoughts. Not only does he know your thoughts, he knows the imaginations of the thoughts. See, the brain is really amazing. You can not only think about things, you can think about what you are thinking about. Think about that. God knows your thoughts. The Bible says Jesus, knowing their thoughts. That's one of many verses that proves Jesus is God Almighty in the flesh. Amen. And get this, God knows your thoughts, and he loves you anyway. Whew. Praise God, okay? Well, God, Job's not answering the question, so God asked him another one. Declare, if thou hast understanding, who hath laid the measures thereof, if thou knowest? Question mark. Job doesn't answer. So God asked him another one. Hast thou entered into the springs of the sea? Did you know scientists didn't even know there were springs in the sea until 1977? God asked Job this question probably 4,000 years ago. God said, where's the way where light dwelleth? The way? Did you know light's in a way? It says, as for darkness, where is the place thereof? Darkness has a place. I like to ask the atheist, what's the speed of light? Oh, 186,282.4 miles per second. Okay. Uh, what's, the, what's the speed of dark? You know what the speed of dark is? Zero. Darkness cannot move. Only light can move. Hey, we're the children of light. We're supposed to be on the move, you know, get something done for God. That's why we got a boot camp, okay, get moving, find something to do. I like what Louis said this morning, man, get, I need help, do something, okay, get involved. If you can't shoot, carry bullets or take care of the wounded or pay for the bullets, okay, but do something, all right? The Bible talks about the gates of hell shall not prevail. Gates don't attack you, you attack them, okay? God said, by what way is the light parted which scattereth east wind? Does the light really cause the wind? Ask any weatherman. Sunlight is what drives the wind patterns on earth. Hot air expands. Yeah, God said it 4,000 years ago. God said, canst thou send lightnings? Boy, it's a good thing I can't. How many of you can think of somebody that's lucky to be alive because you can't send the lightnings? I can think of several. Yes, sir, I can. God said, canst thou send lightnings that they may go and say 